It was the day after Thanksgiving, 50 years ago. CBS Reports presented what would become one of the most important documentaries of its time. Harvest of Shame chronicled the plight of America's migrant farm workers. And now, a half century later, Chief National Correspondent Byron Pitts returns to the fields to continue the story. They are the migrants, workers in the sweatshops of the soil. The Harvest of Shame. In 1960, CBS News correspondent Edward R. Murrow called them the forgotten people, the undereducated, the underfed. With raw and striking images, Murrow's documentary exposed the poverty and deplorable working conditions endured by America's two to three million migrant farm workers. Only on name they are not a slave, but in a way they are treated, they are worse than slaves. Men, women, and children who harvested crops for the best fed nation on earth earned barely enough to feed themselves. What is an average dinner for the family? Well, we just, you mean what do we have in? Yes. We, well, I cook a pot of beans and fry some potatoes. From the tomato, bean, and sugarcane fields of Florida, working steadily north to the apple orchards of New York, life was an endless road trip. In housing, crowded, dilapidated, often filthy, but all a worker could afford on an average yearly income of $900. That's about $6,700 today. Today, 50 years later, migrant work is still backbreaking. Here in Immokalee, Florida, the tomato capital of the country, harvest season is just beginning. While the work's the same, wages have improved. That's if the work can be found. In this tiny trailer he shares with his wife and five children, 62-year-old Juan Lopez gets up before dawn, hoping to find work as a tomato picker. How much money do you make in a year, most years? Last year, in 2009, I earned 7800 for the entire year. $7,800. For a few months, this rented trailer is home. Six, sometimes seven days a week, he competes with younger men and women for a limited number of jobs. Like every other industry, farming has suffered in this economy, and those at the bottom suffer most. On this day, Lopez is hired to work on a tomato farm more than two hours away. Over the years, the faces in the fields have changed, from poor whites and poor blacks to poor Hispanics. Today, most migrant workers are from Mexico. Workers make about ten to twelve and a half thousand dollars a year. There are no mandated benefits like health insurance, overtime, or sick pay. In extreme cases, some farm workers have been held against their will, forced to work for little or no pay. Modern-day slaves. Women routinely endure sexual harassment. Since 1997, seven slavery operations have been prosecuted in Florida. More than 1,000 workers have been freed. Most migrants are hardworking people like Claudia Basquez, a mother of four. This year's Basquez has already picked Michigan blueberries, Georgia tomatoes, and now it's Florida grape tomatoes. On top of her $7.25 an hour minimum wage, she'll earn 60 cents for each 32-pound bucket she fills. Not a lot of money, just about enough to eat but we don't have any money to save. But soon that may change. Under an agreement between Florida tomato growers and the CIW, an advocacy group for field workers, working conditions will improve to include shade in the fields, a strict code of conduct, and perhaps most importantly, increased wages. Nine national food giants, including Whole Foods and McDonald's, have agreed to pay an additional penny for each pound of tomatoes picked that penny a pound program could put another five to seven thousand dollars in the pockets of America's field workers each year. John S. Forum's family owns Pacific Tomato Growers, the first grower to sign on to the new agreement. Our effort was really about making it a public conversation because it's intolerable that anybody behave inappropriately within agriculture. We know that the industry is changing. We know that it doesn't have to be a harvest of shame anymore. It can be a harvest of hope. Hope for a better tomorrow. What will you and your family do for Thanksgiving? Si alcanzaremos. 
If we have enough, we'll try to buy a turkey, and we'll share that. Fifty years ago this week, America was given its first glimpse at what Murrow called the sweatshops of the soil. Fifty years later, the bounty and blessings of many this Thanksgiving remains the burden of a few.